Yes, glory to Russia. Um, disintegration? No. Union? Yes. Thousands of protests were held across the country against the current policies of CPSU and in support of the Democratic Union. In anticipation of a referendum on the preservation of USSR, we must mobilize all available forces by demonstrating that people of Russia are not a side. But here is the question, which side to take? Supporters of preservation of the Union or opponents of the new Union? Wait, what do you mean too little, too little political power? What the fuck? We aren't Yeltsin enough. <laughs> we aren't Yeltsin enough? Like, I'm Yeltsin, but I'm not Yeltsin enough. This, this is like a Trump moment. It's like, I'm Trump, but I'm not Trump enough. Support the Union. Do it. I know you want to. No, but it's too late. <laughs> it's never too late. You, dude, we're gonna confuse everyone. Yeltsin, Yeltsin supports the USSR. LIBERAL USSR! Basically, come on. This would be pretty epic, not gonna lie. Like, uh, just make ultra-nationalist USSR. Okay. Uh, da da da. Demonstration became the largest in the history of the Union, gathering in one place at the same time more than 700,000 people! Boris Yeltsin is drunk! The opposition is preparing to catch up and overtake us, preparing to hold its rally, but we know that popular support is ours! Who would have guessed that people liked the USSR? Yeah, of course. Uh, Boris Yeltsin can do anything he like! What? Finances. Uh, uh, one hundred is the standard. I know, I know. Oh god, let's keep going and see uh, union will be. Union will be. Oh god. This month should pass the old union referendum on the preservation of USSR. The Supreme Soviet of USSR noted that the supreme authorities of individual republics in violation of the constitution and legislation of USSR actually blocks the implementation of the decision of the 4th Congress of People's Deputies of USSR on holding a referendum. I don't understand what's going on. Uh, in these re <laughs> these republics attempts were made to replace the referendum formula approved by Supreme Soviet of SSSR supplement it with other issues of republican and local significance or to conduct republican polls and plebiscites instead of all union referendum. In general, one way or another, the highest authorities of Georgia, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldova, Armenia and Estonia prevent the holding of all union referendum on their territory since they did not even create central republican referendum commission. They, they love democracy, by the way. Uh, uh, we, we have to... We are going with liberal USSR, so we have to preserve it to actually... To actually make it liberal in the beginning. <laughs> Please, don't play with my heart like this. Please say something. <laughs> See, I know what you want. <laughs> but is it what Russia needs? Is what you're thinking? <laughs> I don't know what I want. You're just going to keep waiting. <laughs> okay, so, um... Oh, <laughs> yeah. So... This is gonna be super weird. Okay. What this this is good. This is what I was thinking I was gonna do, but then like I'm not Yeltsin enough. The, like the game literally told me I'm not I'm not Yeltsin enough, so I don't fucking know. This just sounds cringe, but I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I mean. I mean, a lot of people don't know what's going to happen right now. I don't know, let's try it. 
Oh boy, here we go. Okay, so at the polling station, the media managed to capture leader of RSFSR who showed the reporters his ballot with crossed out word no, urging all conscious citizens who care about the fate of their homeland to do the same. The vote was successful without any notable incidents. The referendum could only be held in 9 out of the 15 republics of Soviet Union. Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Moldova, Armenia and Georgia officially refused to hold a referendum, although part of the population of those republics was still able to vote at polling station organized by individual council of people's deputies and public organizations. A referendum took place in some autonomous republics, in particular the overwhelming majority of residents of Transnistria and Gagauzia, as well as Abkhazia and South Ossetia, voted to preserve USSR. In general, the country, 70% of Soviet citizens voted yes for preservation of Soviet Union. This is a great day in our history. In Russia, at the same time as a referendum on preservation of USSR, a plebiscite was held on introduction of president of RSFSR, which is also success. Okay. So wait, we're gonna be like the president of the... Uh, no. Okay, the war of budgets? The fuck? Uh, I love the full ca the all caps over here, by the way. Uh... <laughs> Only during this period, more than 35 billion rubles will not be received. Okay, the income of the pension fund of the USSR is not provided. This is the result, first of all, of the legislative acts of a number of republics and the distribution of budget revenues received on their territory are in conflict with the federal legislations. As you can, as you see, the due to the worsening economic situation and the adoption of declaration of sovereignty in union republics, the union's budget is rapidly emptying and the national economy of the once great superpower is close to complete collapse. As a result of this, some measures must be taken to stay afloat, but which ones? RUSSIA IS A SOVEREIGN COUNTRY! Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. We need to go further to begin accelerated transition to my- No, that's cringe. Okay, see that this is gonna explode the USSR. Uh, uh, but I thought we wanted a- We just- we just- we just voted for the USSR, so let's uh, yeah. But why not increase the transition to the market then? Because that would explode the USSR even more, you dumb fuck. I thought you said we were going liberal anyway. I don't know what the fuck we're doing! We, we, okay, so we already slightly preserved the USSR, in my opinion. So going, so going with the market there wouldn't have exactly ruined it, it well, maybe it would have ruined the economic situation more, but... I don't know. I just have to just separate in my mind right now. Okay, uh, I just screamed. I just screamed my mute and mu muted my mic at the same time because it was a thing. Okay, so I. I, I wait, are you sure you muted your microphone there? Wait, I did not. Oh no no no! See no 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 no! Okay, see like you heard it, but no one else heard it because I muted it on um on OBS. Okay, okay, right, 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 okay. Okay. I did not. I did not actually press the button to mute the microphone. Okay, so, um... Uh, under pressure from the Union government, the RSFSR contributed an unpaid portion of the proceeds to the Union budget. Other republics of the SSR continued the viscous budget war against the center, but Kazakhstan and other Central Asian republics began their negotiation with Moscow on restructuring their financial policies. The Baltic states, in turn, continued to pursue independence from the USSR, uh, nevertheless... They can kill themselves. Uh, they can, they can, they can take a, they can take a dump of gasoline and burn. We can send in the liberal space nuts. Uh, the Baltic states, in turn, continues to pursue independence from USSR. Nevertheless, the union's economy did little to help. A new Pavlov government had to take decisive measures, having implemented a monetary reform in order to combat speculation. However, an increase in the general price level dealt a serious blow to the material security of all citizens. Yeah, so... Standard of living went down and everyone is in queues again. 
Fast is growing again. 98. I think we confused everyone enough that, like, uh, if the USSR blows up, no one's gonna blame us. The phone is only the same button right now, right? It just said done. Done. The USSR is done. <laughs> and. Ah uh, no! I just, I just, did, I just, did, I just did a, cr I just did a cringe. I'm sorry. We don't need it at 120, but yeah. Oh whoa! What the? Why is there Lenin with a perestroika? <laughs> ah, screen cap. Screen cap. Holy! <laughs> That's so good. Also, I love this pick. Like, uh, without the perestroika, like uh, hard at, uh, because. Lenin in this normal pick has like the a really really cool hat, and so yeah, this pick is really epic. Uh, he's got like a you know Sicilian mafia hat kind of thing. Uh, after the start of Perestroika in the mid 1980s, national movements intensified. S send in the SS. <laughs> in November 1990, the. <laughs> Send in the Estonians. <laughs> Chechen National Congress was held in Grozny, at which he was elected the All National Congress of Chechen People. Oh no. Oh no. The N Cheche or N. Wait. Oh, Congress. So N N K Chepe set up as its. Or I suppose. Yeah, the it's weird. Set up as its. Gold withdrawal of no sh holy shit. This is this is actually like a hilarious language mash because like see if it wasn't Russian it would be like it would, it would make sense because K N well K N she would be different. Right? Yeah, but like hold on. So this is the National Chechen or National Congress of the Chechen people, right? Yeah. They put H C H. Because in Russian it's cha, I know, but I but know. in English there isn't. But it's not in Russian because in Russian it would have been not p but n because narod. So it's just such a weird mashup. It's in a, in actual English it would be nccp. This is so lamal. Like this is actually a linguist nerds over this stuff. It's like so fucking hilarious that a Russian person does this. Oh god, so. It was led um, by Major General of the Soviet Air Force, Jokar Dudayev. Traitor! Predatel! Uh, a conflict began between NKCP or <laughs> NKCP and the. Imagine Yeltsin calling someone a traitor for wanting to see seed from the USSR. Fair point. <laughs> Although he did do that for. Ch like, I love how. Um, Yeltsin had like two levels, like uh, like the republics is fine, but like Chechnya too much, Tatarstan too much. An alternate history in which Russia explodes into like twelve republics is pretty like not gonna like pretty fun. Like it, it uh, it's understandable. Russia. I would I would read I would read this Tom Clancy novel where then uh, like uh, someone somehow restores the like. Nazi Soviet Union of Russia of the Tsarist Empire and uh, and, nu and nukes the USA. That's that's something to classify. And don't forget to add Putin just because. Yeah, and like Putin is actually the communist imperial president of uh, yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, the Chechen English are being cringe. Uh, they are led by Count Duku. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a conflict between the NKCP and the official authorities of the Supreme Council of the Chechen English Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic. Man, the Chechen English Autonomous Soviet Social, the Ch E R S S R, Jesus Christ, headed by Count Duku Zagayev. Z Zavgayev. Yes. What you're telling me is we're dealing with separatists here. But he's actually not the separatist. He's actually the one who wants to stay in. Earlier this month, the NKCP announced its deposition of the Supreme Council of the Chechen English Autonomous 
Soviet Socialist Republic. So many fucking like names of institutions <laughs> and proclaims the independent Chechen Republic. Dual power has developed in the region. What do you mean to low power of special forces? We need to send them at least money. What do you mean you you have too low power of special forces? We have fucking given money to KGB. Um, uh, well, we did decrease just recently. So far the pro-government forces remain in control of the Republic, but the radicals are in full swing preparing for a full seizure of power. I'll send in the tank. No, actually, don't send in the tank. Send in the Air Force first. <laughs> Pinochet, I hello. I, 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 I forgot how it went when we sent the tanks into Chechnya. <laughs> hello, Pinochet. Uh, we need more fucking special force. Uh, I love how the special force is like a. Uh, it's like a hidden stat. Because uh, I don't see no like uh, military power in here. And I don't know why. Candidati, candidate. Uh, so, in Ju June 12th, 1991, should be the first presidential election of RSFSR. Together with the president of RSFSR, the vice president of the RSFSR is also elected. <laughs> How many posts? Uh, similar to the US presidential election system, a vice president is nominated with the president a single ballot item. Uh, the Capesu is going, or Capesas. I, I keep saying Capesu. It's, it's actually Capesas. Uh, is going to nominate former SSR Prime Minister Nikolai Rishkov as president, uh, while candidate from Democratic Union is quite obvious. But he's, according to socialists, the candidate from Democratic Opposition has. Uh, every chance to take the place of head of state. However, the results of the polls vary greatly depending on region. Who will win? Join presidential race. Wait, Down what? With Down with the Democratic Union? <laughs> <laughs> it's because we didn't destroy the USSR. I mean, you sure? Yes. We are. So we were supposed to be the Democratic Union, but we decided to be the USSR. We are the Liberal Party of the USSR! Mr. President! Or Mr. Already President! <laughs> I am so sad. I don't have a, a shot of vodka at the ready because that deserves... <laughs> This is why I love Crisis in the Kremlin. The writing is just like so epic. I have to congratulate you on brilliant victory in past election. Thanks to our popular support, we were able to easily bypass opposition candidate and show the whole world who the citizens of Russia are ready to follow. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I can't actually tell if our economy grew or fell. <laughs> I don't know. The party is no longer needed. So the referendum of the preservation of the union held at the beginning of the year confirmed the political split in the society. Soon there was a sharp increase in prices, increasing social tensions and becoming a catalyst for social strikes. Uh, to stop the strikes, enterprises began to transfer the Republican jurisdiction and stopped transferring their profits to the... No. Hold, hold up. Now, I don't know... Like, I'm not a USSR, like, mechanics nerd. But what the fuck is going on? So, okay, so there's strikes. So to stop the strikes, enterprises began to transfer to the rep Which republic? The Russian Republic? And stop transferring their profits to the union budget. So they're the affecting from us from being ussr property to being rsfsr property but how is that gonna stop the strikes I, i'm not even sure i'm just confused i need more vodka unless, uh, unless, unless these strikes are less about money and more about political 
I somehow doubt it, considering people are uh, are doing the COVID-19 uh, social distancing lines. <laughs> anyway, now the turn of the that's retaliation. That's how we're going to call them from now on, not red lines, but... Yeah, it's it's like it's it's either it's it's either the kill Gorbachev line, you know, with like the the joke to like the line to kill Gorbachev was uh, much longer, uh, or the COVID nineteen lines. Uh, so proposed to carry out the so-called departization, beginning the activities of banning the activities of party organization and enterprises and institutions. Is that like? Isn't that just like the switcheroo? Like. <laughs> Wouldn't this technically stop the oligarchs from happening? No, it's banning the Communist Party! Yeah, but a bunch of the Communists ended up becoming oligarchs anyway. True, true, true. They up in the party and then they just got hold of anything they could once everything started falling apart. But will this not inflict a final blow on the state system, which is still so closely connected to, with the party? Okay, yeah, that's also a problem. Fuck. That's fucking hard. Should, should we just take a chance with letting the oligarchs be? <laughs> Soviet oligarchs! oligarchs! Oligarchs, but in USSR. Oh no! What's going on? Oh shit, it's the getcha- <laughs> It's the fucking committee for uh, state security or whatever. No, so, no, no, that's the KGB, the, the committee for national salvation. Okay, uh, the state of emergency. So the lull of the last days was really not good. Today, according to all publications in the media, the state committee on the state, <laughs> the state committee on the state of emergency, that, the, the translation to English is not kind to this. Uh, the GKCP was formed, declaring the incumbent president of USSR, Mikhail Gorbachev, incapable of fulfilling his duties. Uh, the declared goal of GKCP, which included the entire ruling elite of Union government and Vice President Yanayev, was to preserve the Soviet Union and suspend reforms in the country. In some areas of the country, an emergency regime was introduced, which included the suspension of the activities of political parties and social movements, a ban on rallies, marches and demonstrations and strikes, the establishment of media controls and other measures. It is obvious that coup has occurred in the country, the constitutionality and legality of this event is also in doubt. What do we do? Okay, okay don't, cl don't click too fast. We need to think of this very, very hard and very long. Okay, so we can just like be like, well, fuck this. We can categorically do not recognize the coup claiming an unconstitutional seizure of power. Wasn't that what happened in real life? Yes. Uh, or we... <laughs> yes. Yeltsin Gekechepe Alliance. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm slightly biased to the case, but not because I want to preserve the union or anything, but simply because I played as them in the 1991 scenario and I just barely won. Yeah, you told me about it. It's like really difficult, right? Uh, well, it depends. If you manage to get into a loop of high taxes and very high military spending, you can kind of just protect yourself infinitely. <laughs> or vodka profits. Um... Okay. <laughs> this is like the, the like, 1991 Soviet Union equivalent of Nazbol. But it's actually Nazlib. <laughs> Nazlib! Nazlib! Compatriots, citizens of the Soviet Union. <laughs> I just did a big cringe. I just did a big cringe. Uh, in a difficult, critical time for the fate of Fadirland and our peoples, we turn to you. Mortal danger looms over a great motherland. The reforms policy initiated by MS Gorbachev, conceived as a means of ensuring the country's dynamic development towards the democratization of public life, has become to has come to stand still for a number of reasons. Initial enthusiasm and hope were replaced by unbelief, apathy, and despair. Authorities at all levels have lost the confidence of the population. M many members of the Communist Party, the leader of the LDPSS, Vladimir Zhirinovsky, Liberal Democratic Party of the Soviet Union, <laughs> 
and the head of the RSFSR, Boris Yeltsin, express support for the Putschis. <laughs> it's even better. Zhirinovsky is in it. <laughs> It's like it's dude. It's like the the end of nostalgia where like Zhirinovsky like becomes the leader of the USSR. Nevertheless, on the orders of the Minister of Defense Yazov, a based man, the Taman Motor Rifle Division, the Kantimir of Tank Division, and the 106 Tula Airborne Division were promoted to stabilize security on streets of city. Like three divisions to stabilize the entirety of the USSR. Somehow I don't see no, 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 Moscow. But, I, I, but to, to be fair, Moscow is like 15 million people at this point. But maybe like 10 to 15 million people at this uh, point. Mo yeah, it's like Moscow is also really big in like the square kilometer area it takes up. Yeah, it's really fucking big. Like it's it's spread. It's a spread out city. Yeah. Yeah, because it has a lot of like dotted spots, like with you know like the village village houses in a bunch of cities in, mm, you know, okay places I mean yeah like parks with like dachas in it or whatever yeah okay um and and like and like yeah and there's a, there's also like um quite a few like uh suburbs that like are you know like kimchi or kimchi or whatever it it's supposed to be or that kind of stuff or um it, or like kubinka where the tank museum is, it's supposed to be like a little town next to it. Yeah, that one is that one is out of the city, but yeah. Yeah, but that's like metropolitan Moscow. Also, like, um, funnily enough, like uh, when you think of like the the Great Soviet Union, you think of like big ass like uh, apartment building, but actually like like the Khrushchevka were like free free story or something. Like they weren't that big. Four, four to five. Yeah, four to f yeah, that's like not that big. So like the the, the population density must not be that big. Size, the typical size of a Soviet Union apartment building is generally five stories. Stories I know because I've lived in one. Yeah, of course, epic Khrushchevka. See, like uh, funnily enough, you you say this is like uh, oh my god, like uh, I have experience the Soviet Union, but actually like in, in Italy, yeah. in in Italy there's like a lot of uh, public housing from like the sixties and fifties. That's pretty much like that. It's like four stories high or three stories high. But there's also like much bigger, like uh, 10 or 12 story, yeah. like again, public housing. It's, it's, it's a lot like the Soviet Union because there used, there used to be a lot of public housing. And although so like- the Although the city where I'm from, the largest public housing buildings were about 10 to 11, I think, stories. That's cringe. I, I love massive fucking buildings. Like, outside my window, there's... For some reason, I don't know, I've never seen anything like this, but there's, like, a... I think you could call it a skyscraper, because it must be, like, at least for, it, at least 30 stories high. And it's actually, like, an apartment building. But see, like, I, I would live in it. Like, I think that that's epic, but whatever. Um, I mean, admittedly, I lived in a town with a population of 40... 40,000... Literally. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's not exactly uh, a yeah, metropolitan but the, but the, but the area. It's pretty standardized. If I go to Chelyabinsk, which is a million city just slightly north of me, then the buildings are basically the same. Epic Chelyabinsk. 